Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about a specific group process tool called multivoting. And I'd like to start by telling you just a little bit about what multivoting is and when you can use it during a group facilitation process. So this form of voting allows the best option for a group to be selected, meaning if a group has a lot of ideas, they're brainstorming, um, this is a great way to narrow down those topics or ideas into um, one option that everyone can be supportive of. And multi-voting usually follows a group brainstorming session in which a long list of possibilities is created. And a selection process is needed to help the group narrow down this list into a manageable length. Because it's very difficult when a group has 50 ideas um, when really not all 50 are feasible or the best alternative. So it's important to have a process and way that groups can narrow down important ideas into something that everyone can agree on. The multi-voting process is preferable to straight voting, uh, meaning just raise your hand one time, because it allows an item that's favored by all, but not necessarily everyone's favorite, to rise to the top of the list. So that way we're, no one's arguing over which one is their favorite or which one they like better because it's taking everyone's opinion into account. So hopefully everyone's voice will be heard and it will be easier to facilitate the decision in a helpful way for everyone. The goal is not for the group to make a single decision, but the process does help the group narrow a long list. So you may not come out with just one result. It may take some time and even further planning before a single decision is made, but this at least narrows it down to a manageable size of ideas. Now there are some procedures that you'll want to follow when you're using this process with a group, and the first is another group process tool, which is brainstorming. So after a brainstorming session where a group is formulating a list of ideas or options, you would want to then move into the multi-voting procedure. And once the list is compiled, you'll combine similar ideas. In case some people have uh, you know, suggested similar things, you don't want to have multiple um, similar ideas on your list. So narrow those down first and make sure you clarify the meaning of each. Don't necessarily go into the opinions behind each, but at least make sure all the ideas are clear in their meaning to the group so that group members don't not vote for that idea just because they're confused by it. So make sure everything is clearly understood by the group. Participants then vote for ideas that they feel worthy um, of further discussion. So voting may be a show of hands or group members can physically go to the list of ideas and mark their choices. So multi-voting can include several different ways of marking. Sometimes you can use colored dots, give everyone a different color, um, or give them different colors for different ratings. For example, you might give out red dots for everyone's first choice, yellow dots for everyone's second choice, and a blue dot for everyone's third choice. And they would place those dots simply next to the ideas they feel are the best ideas. Or you can use sticky notes. You can make a chart and have sticky notes for each different idea, and each person can go place a sticky note next to that topic. It depends, but one of the most popular methods is the dot method. Um, but you can also just list them by name or by topic instead if you don't have dots available. And participants can vote for as many items as they wish, or a limit may be specified. So depending on how many you have, you may want to only um, give the option of you know choosing your first three or five, or you may have as many as ten choices. So determine how many choices each participant can vote for um, before you allow the voting process to begin. Once all participants have voted, identify items for the next round of voting. So it is a process, so you're not going to end up with one idea after the first round. Um, the number of items that receive votes from half the group or more moves to the next round. So for example, if 12 people are voting, any idea receiving at least 6 votes will be voted on again in the next round. If the idea receives less than 6, then it is eliminated from future voting. So that's how you narrow down a very long list. Just one vote at a time, it slowly narrows it down to three to five. Items that are identified for the next round should be marked with a symbol of some kind. So you might consider circling them or marking them with a star. Um, that way everyone knows which ideas are still available to vote on. 
So participants would again vote. This time they may only cast votes for half the items remaining. So you narrow it down each time. For example, if there are 20 items for the last round that are being voted on, a participant can only vote for 10. So just make sure as you narrow down your list that you're narrowing down the amount of votes each person will get and how many items they can vote for. And these steps repeat as many times as necessary until around three to five options remain for the group. So just make sure um, that you narrow it down to a, not, to, a, to a few items. That way you're able to um, work through the process more specifically. So the group takes those three to five options and then discusses the pros and cons of each. Um, they may need to have further meetings or discussion. It may be another long process of narrowing down ideas. So it's just to identify the top priorities and the best options to really sit and focus on instead of trying to focus on 50 items in depth, which would lead to a decision never being made. So some materials you might need if you're going to use this tool in a meeting or in a group facilitation. Um, you might want to put these items or ideas on a whiteboard or a flip chart so that everyone can clearly see them. Um, I'd also suggest having pens of some kind that you can mark the, the items that continue on for vote. Um, markers or pens of some kind that show up a little bit better. Expo markers if you're using a whiteboard. Then have a pen or pencil for each participant so that they can write down ideas, brainstorm, contribute to the original brainstorming session. And then if you choose to use the colored dots method, you'll need to have dots for everyone. Another idea that you might want to implement is called an affinity diagram. And uh, there's an example here of the diagram that you can look at. Um, and this is just basically an organized way of putting all of your ideas together. So it's a chart. So for example, um, this group was talking about possible for performance measures for their company and they did a brainstorm and then put them into this chart. So it's just a helpful way of organizing all the ideas so that everyone can clearly see them before voting begins. And there's one other resource I want to tell you about and that's a website called Dotmocracy, kind of clever. The Democracy website provides templates that participants can fill out during brainstorming sessions and then each person writes down an idea and participants actually move around to different papers and mark down their thoughts regarding the idea. So it's just kind of another graphic way to put down ideas and people can move around. It gets them moving and talking and one of the templates looks something like this. So one person would write their idea here whether it's, you know, um, a course that you want to see offered at school, whether it's a professional development session you might want to see, you would write that here with your idea. And then your colleagues would move around and write down whether they agree with that idea, they disagree, they're neutral, they might have concerns, which they would write here, and then they can sign that they have voted. So it's just another way to organize it, but it makes it a little more personal because each person gets their own, and then um, you give them an opportunity to fill them out. So that's just something to use if you don't want to do the typical big list up on the board. Um, this is another method that you can use for multi-voting. So I hope this helps you um, implement this process. Again, it's just a great way to narrow down a large list of topics to keep the group focused on ideas that really matter and that really need further discussion, and then also allows everyone to hear, have their opinion heard. So thank you for listening.